Brandon Moser, thank you for a $5 super chat. Are there any solutions similar to input shaping for 3D printers to identify and mitigate resonant frequency bands? Um, well, you can look at the black box logs and find the resonant frequencies and then use notch filters to notch them out. But it's really better to solve those problems mechanically because filters, filters are always sort of a Band-Aid on a problem that probably should be solved mechanically first. The thing is, there's only so much you can do mechanically, and then filters come in and like fit the re solve the rest of the problem. But especially if you have resonance, like, especially if you have resonance, you know, in the mid frequencies, like 70 to 150 hertz, like you can notch those out and it will fix it. But those notches can have an effect on the PID controller, and so it's not ideal. Just to be clear, essentially, you're trading math for like you're 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 you have to do more math so it costs more time, and that's more processor cycles, so you get to do you know it's later to get the info. That's why, yeah. like, because I see a lot of people like I explain that stuff, and they're like, well, yeah, but we have these processors. Why don't we just do the math and? It's fine, right? And it's just because, like, the better you can do mechanically, the less math you have to do to get rid of all the noise. That's all. Well, and it's it's not just about processor cycles because you could you could re reply and say, yeah, but the processor is fast enough that it can do the math in negligible time. The issue is that filtering always induces delay. And the analogy I like to use is, let's imagine that we're going to do a simple rolling average filter. So what we're going to do is. We're going to take the average of 10 samples, okay? And that's a, that's a very simple low-pass filter, actually, okay? So here we go. Sample number one comes in. What gets output from the filter? Nothing, because we're going to do the 10-sample average. There is, no, there is no average. I don't have 10 samples yet. Sample number two comes in. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten samples come in, and now I take the average of those 10 samples, and I output the average, and now sample number 11 comes in, and I take the average of samples 2 through 11, and I output the average. Do you see that by its very nature, no matter how fast my processor is, if I'm going to do a 10-sample rolling average, I must wait 10 samples before I can start outputting, and I can never catch up. That the output of that filter is always 10 samples delayed from the input. And that's true for all filters. Every time you add a filter, you will add delay between the gyro data and the output of the filter, and you will do what's called, well, you'll do phase shifting on the data, which changes some of the frequencies up or down. So you want to minimize the amount of filtering because filters always add delay, no matter how fast your processor is.